Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Well, this is a homage to the best couple of boxers we got in the world today. Right? That'd be Alexander Uzi, the living legend. You know, Terrence Bud Crawford. Damn it, the living legend. Right? With these two, I got them one and two in the pound for pound, and every day it goes back and forth like a tennis match between Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. And Djokovic sitting over there on the side waiting to who win. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like that between those two. Naomi Inui, I got him third because of his lack of competition in those lower weight classes, right? And uh, his best wins are Nonito Denier at 40 years old and Stephen Fulton right these other two guys got some stuff on their resume and you know it's a little bit more impressive because you have greater boxes at the heavier weights right you're starting at lightweight it gets a little bit more more people more parity more people who are boxing at that age and you have a lot more better fighters that's not inui's fault and like i said before inui don't need to go way up to fight no Javante Tank Davis to show his greatness. He's already showing his greatness. But I do have him number three pound for pound, which, damn it, is pretty damn good. Number, th just number three. And the two you behind is ridiculous. I know some people got him number one, but that's just not what it is. Uh, I would have said maybe 30 minutes ago, Alexander Ozick's number one. Y'all know how I feel about the living legend, right? I said it before, and it was funny. Because every time I mention all this guy's I tell you what he did. You know, went. You know, when he went, to, became cruiserweight, uh, <laughs> cruiserweight undisputed. When he went to Berlin to beat Marco Huck. When he went to Latvia to beat Marius Brightis. When he went to um, Russia and beat your boy uh, Gassiev. No, um, yeah, Marit Gassiev. Right, and then I say what? Uh, after that. He beat Tony Bellew when he, you know, just for GP. When Tony Bellew was up there looking pretty good, he went over to Liverpool or Manchester to beat him. And every time I say that, and I say before that, he beat Michael Hunter, and uh, uh, in 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 America, and he beat Glovaki to become champion in Poland. I left that out one time, and somebody who came in one time said, "Hey, don't forget Glovaki in Poland and Michael Hunter." Yeah, I got you, bro. That means you only watched one Uzik video here because normally I don't leave that out. But it is what it is. A lot of people, you know, they come in and, uh, you know, they argue with thumbnails or argue, you know, be, they'll do. I did a video about Terrence Crawford saying uh, that my, uh, Majumov is the cherry pick for Terrence Crawford. Meaning that, you know, totally uh, not literally. That nobody should be saying that. But in the title, I just put it, he's a damn cherry pick. And people go off because they're arguing with the damn thumbnail. Didn't look at Because after 30 seconds in the video, you know damn well that's what I'm not talking about. And anybody that came here and heard two Terrence Crawford videos from me know how I feel about Terrence Crawford. But if you didn't, now you will. Terrence Crawford's number one pound for pound, slightly over Alexander Uzik. Alexander Uzik just proven that he he's the bomb, man. He really is. Uh, you know, Two division, undisputed, just like Terrence Crawford. And he did it going to everybody's backyard, never fighting at home. Now just beating Te um, Tyson Fury, who many were trying to say was one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, which was a ludicrous thing to say at that point. But, you know, they just do it. You know, that's that, uh, you know, bias that when you, you know, in the present, right? And that's what it is. When you're in the present, you're a little bit biased and you forget certain things. Um, who you're talking about and the people of the past. You know, I don't think Tyson Fury and Lennox Lewis should even be in the same sentence. Not yet, you know, but that's how that went. And so Alexander Uzik was able to beat Anthony Joshua and him in the heavyweight division and Joshua twice. So, you know, makes number one pound for pound without really arguments normally. But Terrence Crawford ain't normally. You know what I'm saying? Now, the reason why I had Uzik in front of Crawford just slightly lately is because Crawford hasn't fought since the Errol Spence fight. But let's not forget what Errol Spence meant. He meant it all at the time. And he wasn't supposed to beat him with that kind of distance. And the people who don't want to fight Terrence Crawford, if it's uh, uh, Fundora or Tim Chu and all them people, you know what I'm saying, and Jamel Charlo and all that, I said that in another video, that factors in here. 
But it's just something I seen that reminded me today and just kind of to remind you, it's just like, wait a minute. You know, Terrence Crawford is on an 11 fight knockout streak. Knockout while moving up, not being doped at the same time. Not being doped, moving up, and knocking people out with pure skill that are bigger than him. You remember, let's just say, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not going to go back to John John Molina and all that. You know, he knocked him out. Uh, you know, Molina could take a punch, but he, you know, you're going to knock out Molina if you're Terrence Crawford because you're just way more skilled. But Jeff Horn wasn't supposed to get knocked out. Not that Jeff Horn who just did what he did to Manny Pacquiao. And if you just watch the size of these people, right? The, the Jeff Horns, the Jose Benavidez, the Kell Brooks, and the, you know, and the likes, the Sean Porters, even the Errol Spences, those are not supposed to be knockouts. Those be supposed to be points, wins, which you trying to get away from them. And it was totally different. So those last 11 knockouts have to factor in. Terrence Crawford is, is going for GOAT status here. But so is, so is uh, you know, Uzik. But Uzik is, um, only had like 11, 12. No, he's had about, about 16 fights now. 16, 17, I think it is right now. But Terrence Crawford has had a whole lot of fights. Uh, I'm not going to think he's getting 50 and 0. Only problem I have about Terrence Crawford is because he's been on 11 fight knockout streak, you're going to keep going up and wait and trying to knock out people. I don't see him knocking out Madrimov, right? I just want him to win the fight. But, you know, you don't have to knock out Madrimov or anybody else, 154, 160, 168. What you've already done, just beat him with your skills, like Floyd Mayweather. We're going to do a uh, Terrence Crawford versus Floyd Mayweather video because uh, Floyd Mayweather, we kind of forgetting. I just watched a video the other day of Floyd Mayweather, uh, the five times Mayweather was hurt. Think about that. Mayweather had a long 50 fight career. We talked about five times he was hurt. And it, made you, it just made you realize how awesome Floyd Mayweather is because when he was hurt, what did he do? And the, and the stuff that we call him hurt, the Zab Judah one, nah, was he really hurt? He just was off balance on that one, but whatever. You know, he, he wasn't really hurt, hurt. He got hurt against Shane Mosley. What happened there? You know what I'm saying? He got hurt at the end of the round against the big old, um, the big old dude from Argentina, Maidana, at the end of the round. He got clocked there. Shook it off, came out and handled that big old dude, you know? And the, the one who really was hurting him was, uh, I keep forgetting his Corley. Corley was hitting him. Corley pieced him up a little bit, quiet as kept. But he was able to strike walking him down while being hurt. Floyd is, is all that. You know what I'm saying? So when you're talking with Floyd and Terrence Crawford can literally talk with Floyd Mayweather. And if he continues to do what we think he could possibly do, especially at 154, if he would have had the opportunity to fight Jamal Charlo for undisputed, we would probably be talking about a three division undisputed guy right now. Right. And possibly even if Tim Chu was undisputed, we could possibly be talking about an un a three division undisputed guy right now. And we ain't talking about, you know, uh, just you get a little belt in the, in the division, fighting at a catch weight, but still getting credit for the full weight. All that stuff we're doing to all those other greats. No, full weight, I'm coming up here to handle you. Same thing with Canelo. Think about this. He's not trying to ask Canelo to lose no weight to fight him. Canelo, I'll come way up to 168 to fight you. Now, I ain't doing that for Benavides. I ain't doing that for Benavides. But I'll come up and get you because you're my height at least. You're a lot stockier than me, but you're my height. Right? So I, I, Terrence Crawford is not still number one pound for pound, but it's very slightly against Alexander Uzik. Uh, and, um, hey, tomorrow might be a new day because y'all know I'll come right back with Alexander Uzik video in 10 minutes and be just as convincing. So as of right now, Terrence Crawford is the number one pound for pound, 11 knockouts. Uh, in a row going up in weight kind of does it for me. What y'all think on this one? Doma Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm up out of here, y'all.